all of us, I would hope, want to be pro-love in messy situations where the Bible left us no convenient verse. Psalm 139, ancient Jewish poetry celebrating the mind of a creator God who saw and knew each of us before we were formed mysteriously in the womb and is frequently cited to support the pro-life position simply doesn't speak to IVF or fatal fetal abnormalities. It should never be used to form controversial laws that other scriptures appear to contradict. Take, for example, the actual laws of Israel at the time those verses were written. Scholars still debate the original wording of a passage in Exodus 21, but early interpretations, such as the writings of Josephus, indicate that it directed the Israelites not to treat violence causing a miscarriage with capital punishment, meaning it wasn't ruled a homicide and treated with the death penalty the same way it would have if such violence caused the mother's death. Disagree with Josephus and find this a weak argument? so is using ancient Jewish poetry to pass highly controversial and costly legislation in 2024. If we conceded these points, we could solve an argument so visceral and so nasty that the social media frenzy around it is psychologically scarring to grown women simply wishing for the right to bear children. The right to bear in love and medical wisdom during a season that significantly heightens our own mortality risks. Can we allow doctors to have a voice in forming laws around life-giving medical procedures and the ones so horribly necessary when it's only possible to save one, not two? To conclude, I'm not what the right considers pro-choice because I do still believe that fetal lives matter. But I will never again call myself pro-life because I dare to claim that the lives of their mamas matter more. Say what you will, every God-fearing father, husband, fiance, or boyfriend in the country will cry out to God with the same request when they see the woman they fell in love with on an operating table. Even if she might be willing to sacrifice herself for the little soul trying to make its way into her arms. I'm not asking you to give up your values. I'm simply asking you to consider that the fall of Roe versus Wade put more women's lives at risk than we ever dreamed it would. I would be one of them if Project 2025 succeeds in pulling Mifepristone from the market during my final childbearing years. You'll never know what that's like until an ultrasound reveals the embryo inside of you isn't growing correctly and at any moment possibly when you're driving down the freeway, your body may begin to hemorrhage the loss. I'm not asking you to take any side or agree to any ban or permit for abortion at any particular age of gestation, at least not today. I'm simply asking you to begin a shift by calling yourself pro-love and inviting discussion with people who have very different lives than your own. Maybe then, we can have legal and social discussions that actually save maternal and fetal lives at the same time.